Hello again everyone, we are Gaming by Gaslight, and welcome back to Starbound. So, when we last left off, we had just completed the High Auto mission. I spent a bit of time off camera trying to do some colonist quests in the hopes of recruiting someone to our cause, but apparently no one wants to join me right now. I'm almost wondering if there is a glitch involved with that, or maybe it's just an uncommon occurrence. But I figured a test, maybe I'll build a couple of uh, surface... Poses, I guess, and see if that affects the spawn rate of quests and other things. But more importantly, I noticed this guy spawned in. Treasured trophies. So what do we need in order to get stuff for him? By the looks of it, we have to collect various uh, material. Wow, we're going to need a lot of diamonds if we want that pen uh, penguin costume legitimately. The ancient alphabet. Ah, this is why we'll want to go back to the Urkius mission. I think we'll save uh, going back to the Urkius mission until we've, uh, until we're just about to go do the Apex mission. Also, wait, what's this thing down here? A Zephyr Spark Launcher. Intriguing. I figure this guy might add even more stuff to his stock as we, I guess, continue, I think. Like, the more uh, quests we do, he might get more stuff, but for now... Let's go do the next Gladiator mission. We also get a vintage scoped, ri uh, scoped rifle. Let's see. Someone else has challenged you in the arena, or challenged you in arena combat. It's a Florin beast tamer named Volo. Come talk to me when you're ready to go. All right. I think I keep changing Nuru's voice. I'm moderately confident. How, what do you have to say, sir? Shots from Volo's rifle will... We'll so Volo will attempt to stay behind her pets to attack from a... He's, he speaks too fast. At least too fast for me to try doing any kind of voice with him. So, we'll just assume he's giving lots of useful... T Ooh, hello. Ah, you're dead. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Nope, 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 nope. Alright. Okay, so they're gonna just keep spawning in new guys. Oh ho! Okay. We can cheese this one. Ah, you missed. Oh ho! Wait for it. Wait for it. Aha! This isn't so very hard at all. Well, that was actually pretty easy, wasn't it? I thought so. I should have known Volo would be no match for me. After all... After all... I am the greatest. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Good stuff. I also stand by my earlier assertion that, uh... The music in this game is awesome. Quite awesome indeed, says I. Alrighty then, so that's that out of the way, so I guess we gotta go looking for jungle planets now. And we also have a silver trophy and a sweet new snipery rifle thing. Let's see here. Two-handed. A little unfortunate. Let's see. Wait, what are the stats on this thing? 24 damage, 24 energy. Eh. It's reasonable. And we're also looking for a grand avian sarcophagus, so alright, let's go. I have to figure out where all the, uh, all the, uh, crafting stuff is made on again. I also, an uh, interesting thing I found out is that, um, what did I find out? It's, uh, the fact that apparently trees do not grow underground. So, yeah, or at least not underwater. So, that's a thing. Whee! What do we got down here? Tough chest. All right, we're going Rambo here. Oh, right, I forgot to read these at last time. So let's read them now. Let's see here. Nox's journal. The uni- Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, I'll worry about doing voiceovers for actual talking people. The universe is ours by rights. It belongs to the humans. The Ocasus members might not understand much, but at least they grasp that. They exalt in their supremacist- Ah, so we have a racist. That's Nox's problem. Let's see, they exult in their supremacist rhetoric and scamper around spreading their hate. 
but they just can't fathom the genesis of what's happening here. Still, better an army of morons than no army at all. Esfer would understand if she could only see past her flawed imaginings. People have a way of letting their own agendas blind them. She's an adult fool, obsessed with unity and harmony, and completely unable to see what's right in front of her. Uh, in front of her face, I guess. Or just right in front of her, yes. Alright, she'll learn. My old teacher will learn. She's an ice tip bug in the path of an avalanche. But basically, this Nox fellow, or a girl, as it turns out she is, is some kind of Anakin Skywalker here. Alright, oh, Nova Kid to T. Um, codexes, codexes. Let's see here. Do -do 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 -do. Um, that was under here. Let's see, what do we have to say? Dear Itsuki, I write this letter to you from the remains of my camp. It appears that missionary work is more difficult than I anticipated. Despite the training we received, I, f uh, I was woefully unprepared for creatures such as these. The morning began as peacefully as one could expect on an uncivilized planet like this. Nonetheless, it was chosen so that I may spread high lotal peace to the less fortunate, so I was determined to rough it. I placed my tea atop a gentle flame and eased myself into my morning meditation as usual. However, I could hardly achieve a state of enlightenment for the cacophony that soon uh, assaulted my ears from beyond a hill. After a calming breath, I set out to investigate. A brief hike to the top of the hill revealed two alien life forms, shining like beacons, each with a marking atop their face. A search through my xenobiological handbook revealed these to be Novakid, a primitive gaseous species. The two, glowing blue and yellow respectively, whooped and hollered as one strummed a guitar, creating some semblance of music. What better specimens to enlighten than these creatures, thought I. I strode down the hill. They seemed wary of me, but I assured them that I meant no harm. I introduced myself in customary fashion, and they returned with their names. The blue one, Bonnebel, the yellow one, Nim. They possessed a most ridiculous accent. Nim extended his hand, and I, assuming it was a customary greeting, reached out in response. The savage shook my hand with a vigor that nearly toppled me. The whole exchange quite uncouth. I'm kind of wondering how this happened, considering the fact that Nova Kid are made out of gas, but... Alright. Hard gas, apparently. Make that what you will. Determined to civilize these ruffians, I invited them to tea, as tradition dictates. They seemed very excited at the prospect, eagerly following me back to my camp. My tea boiled, and as I prepared the proper settings, the Nova Kid perused my camp. There was not a single ornament they were not curious about. Their filthy hands touched all my perfectly aligned furnishings. They shattered my favorite coral sculpture. Wait, wait, wait. What? Coral sculpture and roughing it. This does not compute. Nevertheless, I knew I could enlighten them. Over tea, I spoke about opening their third eye to the world. They seemed to barely pay attention. The tea I served was my finest blend, but after a single sip, they dropped my cups, shattering them on the floor. I struggled to remain calm as Bonnebel removed a jug of some liquid and passed it between herself and Nim. Perhaps I could earn their trust by partaking in this cultural tradition, I thought. Oh, they're gonna get him drunk, aren't they? After a hesitation, they allowed me the jug. Maybe they're warming up to my teachings after all. Those thoughts faded away after I lifted the jug to my mouth. The drink burned down my throat, and after one sip, I fell unconscious. Wow, lightweight. When I awoke, Bonnebel and Nim were gone, leaving me in my battered camp nursing a terrible headache. And this note with a warning for your missionary travels, Itsuki. Never invite a Nova Kid to tea. You know what's really, really frustrating about that? That whole story? Is that you never see random Nova Kid wandering around. Like, ever. That saddens me greatly. Why can I not see random Nova Kid wandering about? Also, was this about a butcherer? Eh, it's a hammer. I don't like hammers. Anyway, I'm going to cut away until we find something interesting, so I shall see you guys momentarily. Well, hello there, Mr. Frog. Welcome. Welcome. Alright, we got ourselves some lagoon trousers. A swamp pot. Good, good. Uh, I want those pixels. I'm also thinking I'm probably just going to pay for the illegal license. The phony one, the counterfeit license, rather than... <laughs> Hoping that I get lucky enough to actually get the desired uh, crew members. I mean, I'm sure they'll come in time, but I don't really feel like waiting, so yeah. We will... I also like these trees. They're very nice. 
You know what? I should try creating some kind of mangrove swamp on the surface of our planet. That would be cool, I think. Hey there, Mr. Frog. You also have nothing to say for yourself. I don't wish that, uh, that the frogs could have dialogue. That's, that's so sad. Just insulting the frog like that's just like, oh, you're looking right at him and there's just nothing interesting here. I see how it is. And then we're just robbing his house. So long, Mr. Frog. Thank you for all your help. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, so we've actually found something interesting and something that I have never seen before. It is some kind of dungeon. Ooh, codex. I love codexes. Let's see. By Hiraki Coral, Hylodal Adventurer. I found myself at some... Oh, dear. I, uh... Ugh. All right. Excuse me for a moment there, Mr. Bat. I will come to deal with you in a moment. Let's see, High Lotto Adventure. I found myself at somewhat of an impasse. Behind me, a horde of glitch with pitchforks and torches were swarming my way. Ahead of me, the opening to a sewer. I made my call and dived headlong into the dark tunnels. Oh, what a narrow escape. Now I am down here exploring the maze-like corridors, encountering not a soul. It is, in fact, rather peaceful. The steady dripping of water from the ceiling, the bubbling rush of streams underfoot, the sporadic buzzing of giant wings somewhere behind me. Oh my. And a couple of outhouses, that's always nice, I guess. It always baffles me, this idea that, uh... Alright, we already know this one, of course. Yeah, Take that! And there we go. Alright, down into the depths. This could be spooky. But fun. Oh dear god! Poop monsters! The worst kind of monster! Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, those tiny little poops. It's terrible. Oh dear god. Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. A valve. If I spin this, I wonder what will happen. But nothing, apparently. Unfortunate. I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping something would happen. Anything. There we go. Lovely job. Actually, is this wired into anything? It is not. It could be, but it's not. That's somewhat unfortunate. All right, we'll just stay out of the range of the poop monsters as best we can. Oh dear. I can't help but notice that the poop monsters don't actually get, uh, they don't actually have uh, a health bar thing, at least as far as I can see, at least not when I was shooting them. Hmm. Oh my. Oh my. You know, if I can, I'd actually like to convince that guy to jump- Oh my god, he actually froze little poops at you. No! No, this is awful! It is literally throwing shit at me. Ah! You! Squiggly one-eyed gross thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what? As fun as it is kind of wandering around here in the dark, let's, uh, let's drop a light on the situation. I mean, granted, an open flame is probably dangerous in a sewer because you have to imagine that there's going to be all kinds of, uh, you know, methane and other toxic buildup down here. Oh dear. That was not my brightest hour, I'll be honest with you right there. Come on, kill him. All right, I'll walk down here just for the pixels. I was dumb, but it was worth it for the pixels. Pixels are love and life and... Oh, what's this? Ah, oh, sweet, the actual time piercer. Pretty good weapon. It actually has a useful secondary. I wonder if that would have worked on Nox, like if I could just freeze him forever. Probably not. I feel the game wouldn't be that generous. Well, that would be kind of broken, I suppose, if you could just perpetually freeze the boss. But, would make my life easier, so I wouldn't mind. Oh, God. No! Stop shooting poop at me, gosh darn it. And that's just gross. Here, I'll shoot him with a piercing shot. That is amazing. I like this, that sniper rifle. 
I'm definitely going to be holding on to it for a while. Oh my. Um, let's see here. I only wish that, uh... Oh dear. Oh god. Oh god. No! Poop monsters everywhere. This is not good. It's gross and unsanitary. Ooh, a vine whip. We're getting all kinds of cool weapons down in the sewer. Alright, let's, uh... Ah! The poop is everywhere and I am dead. Alrighty then, so here we go. Now, it occurs to me, as I've been kind of going back here, that we're kind of in a shitty situation. You'll have to forgive my uh, potty mouth for resorting to such cheap toilet humor. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's it. That, that's all the terrible, terrible puns related to this dungeon that I could think of. Took me the entire time I was walking back from my ship to figure out those ones, so get some laughs in from that, please. It's, it's, it's all I've got. <laughs> it's all I've got. But seriously, though, yeah, this is actually a, an absolutely garbage dungeon. Absolute. Couldn't be, couldn't be, uh, couldn't be, oh god. You know you're in a bad spot when you have, like, anthropomorphic living shit that's trying to kill you. Seriously. Seriously. And yet, here we are. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. As it were. Oh god! Stop throwing! <laughs> like, what are we? An oh my god. Listen, I don't know what to tell you, but when you have an enemy that is literally vomiting, it's made of crap, it's vomiting crap, you could say it's talking crap? All right, and we are back. So, yes, back into the shit dungeon. The, it's obviously, yeah, the shittiest dungeon in the entire game. And I mean, the thing you really have to wonder about this dungeon is, I mean, where is all the waste actually coming from? Because Glitch don't have digestive tracts, at least as far as you would figure. Wow, I'm getting a lot of copies of this nice day out thing. Well, let's uh, let's just dig our way out, I guess. Why not? Let's dig our way into the underground. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, all kinds of things could go wrong. We could still get killed. Plenty of stuff out there that probably wants to kill us. Very peaceful music, though. I like this. Anyway, yeah, I'll cut away until we get back to the surface and find something else interesting to go exploring in, so, yeah, I'll see you guys momentarily. Oh, look at this! Success! We've actually found a, an avian airship. Beautiful. Alright, so we can just kind of hop our way up here, and that'll get us some clues for sure. Hopefully, I don't know if it'll be enough to actually get us up to the mission, but at least we're making progress. Progress is all I care about, to be honest. Alright, let's just examine some stuff. Uh, do you, would you guys mind if I started smashing these barrels? Okay, it is, it is something that would bother you. Gotcha. Wait a minute. Just occurred to me. I have an avian back at my base. What's this? Ooh. Pilot's backpack. Nice. Uh, I guess I'll get rid of this as well. Alright. Anything? Anything here that would be a clue? Well, we can free up a bit of space by upgrading our power modula modulator thingy my bob. There we go. Alright, there's gotta be some clues around here somewhere. Let's take a look. Come on, clues. We're also getting some good medicine type stuff, so that's always good. Don't really have a lot of space in my inventory, which is my own fault, of course. But, these weapons aren't really, for the most part, any better than what I've been using, so... I guess it's okay. Though, I, I will admit my disappointment that I, uh... Don't seem to be getting clues from any of the stuff I'm examining here. Which... Is very unfortunate for me, but oh well. That's life sometimes. Sometimes it takes a while before you can actually get all the clues you need to go to your little missiony things. 
There we are, examine that little toilet. And that guy's got a quest for us, so at least we can wrap this episode up by saying that we got some progress done. In that particular... Oh, oh, yes, a clue. Nice. And a diary, so we're gonna have to come back for that. But first, examine everything. Hi there, Captain. Oh my god. The top, top hat. I'm gonna get rid of these snowballs. We're one step closer to actually having our, uh... Ooh, what's this? And a tribal mask. Wow. We're just fashion-bounding our way right around, aren't we? Uh, I guess I'll get rid of this. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Alright, so good progress all around. Let's see what that mission we have is. Kind of disappointed we only got one clue out of all of that, but... Still, progress is progress, so let's not let's not get too disappointed. What do you have for me? Two iron ore. Is that really? I have no iron ore on me at all. That kind of baffles me a little. You'd figure I would be carrying a little. Oh well, we can come back here. I mean, we're gonna have to dig into this planet's crust. Oh wait, here we go. A clue. Old statue is both a history of Cluex and a statue of him. He looks like a long. He looks long, like a snake. Interesting. I always figured Cluex was actually a, one of those bunny rabbits, but, yeah. I don't even know if the game ever explains what's with the, uh, the apparent fascination, I guess, with, uh, rabbits in Florin culture, or not Florin culture, in avian culture. Oh well, that's a question for another time, but for now, I think we'll wrap this episode up, so, for now, thank you all for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video.